Alrighty, so welcome to the second part of this tutorial. We're gonna be rendering our shoe animation out in Redshift. So if we go file, merge objects, find our shoe animation, then just import it with uh, centimeters, usually works, out of Clow, and there it is. I'm gonna scale it up a bit. Um, just for this render, just to make it a little easier to navigate in the viewport. And then I'm going to create a plane object and just set up a, a real simple scene here. With the plane on the bottom, that will mostly just be there for some ambient occlusion. But then I'm holding control and shift to duplicate and rotate this plane to create a backdrop. Then I'm hitting T on the keyboard to scale it up a bit. And that looks good for me right now. So I'm gonna go to window, open up our material manager, and I'm gonna change my render settings to Redshift. Um, and then output all frames and change the width and height to, I guess, 1920 by 1920 will work for me because I'm going to do one-to-one -one safe for vertical and horizontal. Um, and I guess I could do a safe path now as well. Cool. So that's all ready to go. Um, and then under Redshift, we can type, go to Redshift Render View and just dock this right here and create Redshift Materials, Material. And I'm gonna go online uh, to Polyhaven and download some fabric pattern. And we can go into this Redshift Material, drag in our roughness map and our normal map, create a bump node, bump map, drag the normal into the input of the bump map and then the output of the bump map into the overall bump input. And then the roughness texture, out color into the reflection roughness of this material. I'm gonna change the color to white or maybe a little bit off white, not quite white, but real close to white. And then if I select the Alembic for the cloth parent, this part's important, I hit C on the keyboard to make it edit editable. Just hit C once, and then go to your polygon selection node, and you hit U, F to select, to enable the fill selections, and then you can select what you want to be textured in a similar manner. So all of these sides, I want to be textured with this cloth. And that's good. So I'm gonna go to select, store selection, and then add this material to the cloth. This, or yeah, cloth parent. And then grab this selection and drag it into the polygon selection. Marquee Delio. I'm gonna change the tiles U to three by three, I think. Just to scrunch that texture down a bit. And then I'm gonna create another uh, redshift material. And this one I'm gonna keep pretty glossy, but I'm gonna make it white or real close to white. And then the only thing that I'm gonna do is go to unsplash and download some sort of texture, some sort of black and white texture that will be interesting to look at because we're gonna use it as a roughness map. Doo, doo, doo. So I'm just gonna drag this into here. Don't look at my files. And put this into base properties reflection, reflection roughness. My neighbor's playing the piano. I don't know if you can hear that. Quite the musician. 
And then you can just drag this. You can drag this below that selection and then it should only apply it to everything that's not cloth selected. Um, and then if we wanna go into polygon selection mode, we can click away. We should have fill selection still on and we can select everything that is the zipper and make it a different material. So just hold shift to select multiple things at the same time uh, and control shift to deselect stuff that you don't need. Shift select. Then select store selection and we can create a new redshift material. Um, yeah, we'll just make a new redshift material, put it there and then do the selection to this. And then I might just make this one black or something, just a nice matte black zipper. matte-ish, add some roughness to it. And we should be good on those textures. But it's still, maybe even a matte white. We'll just do everything whitish. Or a metal texture might look good because it is a zipper. Then we can go back into the object mode and just move the anchor point with this anchor point movie tool. It was having trouble earlier with that, but I'm just gonna move the anchor point to the center of this shoe. That looks good to me. And I'm just gonna go to the end of the timeline, create a keyframe for all the position and rotation attributes, and then go to the beginning of the timeline, bring it closer to the camera, and rotate it a bit. So I want it to kind of start out a little vertical. Oops. Start out mostly vertical and a little skewed and then it'll settle into place as not vertical and not skewed. So put those keyframes down and then go into window, timeline F curve, hit H on the keyboard to uh, center everything. And then you can hold control on these to uh, bunch them up, bunch up those keyframes and control on these to elongate them so that it's a really smooth motion. <laughs> Maybe I'll try some exact values like ninety, ninety, ninety. That looks good. That was a good idea. Um, okay, and then last thing, we definitely need to add some lights because this looks pretty bad. So I'm gonna create an area light uh, and then go into details, make it a sphere, um, move it here, duplicate it by holding control, move another one to the other side, maybe take it back a bit, and then maybe one on the top of it. Um, to get some nice light wrapping around. Lower the intensity a bit. To 30, 20, oh, we could probably have a bit more fill in there and a bit more fill over here to kind of diminish some of these shadows a tiny bit. This one doesn't need to be as bright though, maybe 10. It'll go from shadowy to 
not so shadowy, cool. Um, that looks good. I'm not disappointed with this lighting, but um, I think that's like, there's so many opportunities for like little subtle hints of, of really big brain DP work, I guess, um, that I can't get to super quickly. So I just kind of keep moving lights around until I like the way it looks. And then the last thing that I do, I might add a tiny fill, um, like one, maybe two. Yeah, that works well. The last thing I'll do here is add a redshift object tag to this and then go to geometry, override, and enable tessellation to add some subdivision to surface to this render. So if I turn on bucket rendering, you can see that everything looks really pretty soft and beautiful. Um, yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good. So then you just need to render this out.